Hey everyone, this is Mr. Isometric and welcome back to the part 4 of our tutorial series. In this uh, video, we are going to spawn our trucks, uh, the enemies in short. Uh, they will be spawned on the left and right both the sides of the road. These trucks will have the rotation depending upon the uh, lane in which they are. So the trucks which are on the right side of this yellow line or lane uh we be facing in the direction in which our car is facing right now and the trucks which will be spawned on the on the this side of the road will have the opposite direction so yeah we have to do that and also our trucks should be spawned over the edge of edge of the road over here uh and not anywhere in the middle of the road uh, we will do that too so yeah uh, before we start the video i would like to thank all of the people and the subscribers who are actually really enjoying this content uh, i'm really happy to see that all the likes on this video even though they are a little bit less but who cares uh, anyone who's watching this video i'm really thankful to you uh, hope the hope my videos are helping and really thank you so much uh, so yeah let's get started in with the video so there are some things to, to be done before we uh, jump right into our visual script oops sorry uh, so first thing we have to do is we need a position of this end of this road over here uh, this position so we can either get it from this uh, road trigger over here we can use this set position but i think we we can't actually move this uh, road trigger and that would be really bad idea so let's just make something which is a dynamic with our car so with some constant offset so we don't have to do extra bit of math for that so let's just make a empty in our car object so let's create an empty and let's name this empty as truck spawner okay so this is our truck spawner and as you can see there is a little little plus sign over there so we just have to uh, that plus sign means that it's not a part of our prefab so let's just right click on that uh, go to add game object and apply prefab to car okay so uh, let's go to our car object and it's important to do that in our car prefab editor so let's just take this and move it in the front um now uh, i think we should move it as we all know that our truck's origin is over um somewhere about here uh, so we will do one thing we will just place it right somewhat over there so we want our truck to respond over there you could actually go ahead a little bit but just make sure that there is a road first and then a truck uh, or that truck will just glitch in the road or will just fall down in the abyss and we want that we don't want that and the reason why i am editing this uh, empty truck spawner uh, in the prefab editor is because when our car will get uh, deleted or suppose you want to delete your car when it uh, crashes with our truck then uh, this uh, truck spawner will actually will be over the here it will the position in which uh, the prefab is okay hope that makes sense but let's get back and as you can see our truck spawner is over here uh, and now what we have to do is we will use this truck spawner uh, to get its z location over here as you can see it has a z location and we actually want only its z location to be used as a spawn location for our truck so yeah and now the question is that uh, when do we want our truck to be spawned and uh, the one of the question was where do we want our truck to be spawned and that is answered that the position over which this truck spawner location is and now the second question is when do we want our truck to be spawned so we want our truck to be spawned whenever uh, there is a new road uh, we actually want trucks to be on the road and it's 
does make sense that whenever our new road is spawned we want a new truck to spawn as well so what we will do is we will actually use our road trigger what this road trigger was doing is that uh, whenever my this road spawner collider whenever it was colliding with our truck uh, this on trigger enter okay this empty trigger the new road was spawned and at that time we want our new trucks to be spawned as well so what we will do is we will actually use this trigger inside our truck spawner okay hope that makes in hope that is making somewhat sense so how do we use this triggers event in our truck spawner event so we will do that by creating our custom event so the custom event is like a portal of events you can say that so this event from here will be gone into this truck spawner event so now just right click and type in custom uh, select this trigger custom event and then plug this uh, event output over here so that our this trigger event will be recorded in this portal yeah, I, I'm just saying it portal because it works as a portal just imagine this as a portal then you have to give this trigger your a name you can name it anything I will just name it truck spawn uh, let's just copy this name and it's important because on the other side of the portal uh, the name should be same uh, and now we have to do is we need to have the instance where we want this uh, portal to open so we want it to be open in a truck spawner so what we will do is we will take the we will find this truck spawner object uh, so that we, we have to take like instance of this truck spawner over here in this script so I'll just make a variable for it and let's make it a game object let's drag and drop this truck spawner over here and drag and drop it over here so as you can see we just take the took the instance of this truck spawner oops let's plug it right into there so now our portal or this custom event will be opened in our truck spawner and without any problem so now uh, now that we have done this uh, we have to go inside our truck and we have to give it a collider a box collider and a rigid body so let's go into our truck and do that let's add component box collider and as you can see there is this uh, plus icon again just right click add component apply to prefab uh, we will go into isometric view uh, just click over here um, then go to the side view now you just have to adjust your box collider even though it looks good to me I'll just tweak it a little bit uh, you can uh, click on this edit collider over here and then you can just drag and drop from over here I think the top doesn't matter because car is, isn't going to be colliding it on the top uh, let's just plug it at over there let's bring it up a little bit over the wheels that much is okay uh, now let's go to the front view and as you can see its wheel are little bit outside so what we will do is we will decrease its size on the X we will give the player a little bit of play with the uh, with our truck okay so I think that's uh, good enough so now let's go and add a rigid body same right click and add component apply to prefab uh, so uh, yeah we are uh, done with this part so now what we have to do is in, we need to give this truck spawner a script 
uh, we will give the script we will just right click bolt flow machine we will make a new flow macro inside our macros folder uh, and we will name it as truck spawner okay great um, now we don't need these two events and now uh, as you know we created this custom event so now we have to take this custom event in our truck spawner so just right click and then type in custom and this time we will choose this custom event and as you can see it's asking for the event name let's control v to uh, paste that name and this name should be perfect as it was in our trigger and also keep in mind as this argument number also matters if this is zero keep this uh, argument here over zero as well so this trigger will trigger or uh, this event will be triggered whenever our on trigger enter is activated so now let's uh, let me tell you the theory behind our uh, truck spawner so as we can see there are four lanes over here uh, I'll just uh, name this one as one two three and four so as I made this road uh, uh, 10 units uh, in the uh, we cannot see it over here but I know that it is 10 units over here and 10 units over here so in general its hole is 20 units but if you don't know your uh, position or length of your road uh, you can do one thing you can just take your car hold uh, control button and as you can see it snaps to the grid so if you are happy with this position just record it so this lane value will be minus 7.5 for the x this will be 2.5 and same if the road is symmetrical you can just use the same values over here but with uh, not but with removing the negative sign if it's there so yeah you can do that so let's go to our truck spawner and now let's add a random variable so this is a random node uh, in which we want a random range node uh, we will choose this integer one as you can see over here in the bottom when I hover over it it says integer input and integer output let's select that now its uh, minimum value will be one and its maximum value will be four so as you know uh, I have named this uh, lane as one two three and four so yeah uh, we want it to be flow on integer okay here it is a uh, switch on integer so let's plug that event over there and select this integer value over here so whatever the integer value over from this random node is will be plugged uh, into this switch in on integer so by selecting this switch on integer you just have to click uh, inside the graph editor you just have to click a plus button over here so let's name it one two three and four wait i didn't rename it as four four okay so if the if from this random node we will get a random number from one to four and then random number will be plugged over here and depending on this random number a custom event will be triggered such as this one two three and four if the random number is four this event will be triggered it only and only this event will be triggered so so now let's instantiate our truck uh, right click type in instantiate and then we have to select this uh, origin position and rotation and inside the original we will just plug our truck prefab okay for some reason it's lagging okay uh, here it is uh, and now we need four of them Okay, great uh, now let's just plug this events over here now 
each of this uh, truck spawner will act as a separate lane spawner each of this will have its own position and rotation so for the position we will create a new vector 3 and each individual one of this will have a new position vector and one crotonian I'll just type in Euler uh, Euler XYZ okay great uh, let's just decrease the size of I'll just decrease the size of my graph and tidy up this let let it be there okay select them move it down select this move it down a little bit and now we will select this both ctrl D to duplicate and this will be for this one okay it's getting a bit messy you can make a super unit for this if you want to or it's fine like this because this is the last time we are touching this script so let's just plug this position over here and rotation over here um, great uh, wait I think we did something wrong uh, this position and rotation for this uh, this position and rotation is for that so this position and rotation is for this Uh, by the way, I think we can use a same position for this both. Uh, I sorry, I mean the rotation. And we can use the same rotation vector for th this both. Sorry, not this, this one. So this uh, rotation vector is for these two nodes. It's common between them and then they both have separate position uh, vectors and then this position vector is for the third third lane and then we have to create a new position vector for this fourth lane and this both will have a common rotation vector which will be zero so we actually don't have to plug anything over here and what i mean by that is as you can see uh, this instantiate node over here how it works so the whatever the model or prefab over here uh, which will be plugged over here that will be instantiated and then what will be the position of it well the position will be anything which is plugged over here XYZ so for the Z location we ne actually need our truck spawners location we will use this truck spawner z value we can also make our truck spawner to have a zero x position ok so it's zero is over there let's go into our car prefab oh yeah uh, this moves with our car right so if we just position our car at zero our truck spawner also gets on the zero okay so we don't actually have to go into our car picker don't do that uh, now what we'll do is ah uh, yeah we were talking about the z value so z value will be of our truck spawner so we will plug that later but before that uh, let's just take a look at our truck so with the rotation zero our truck is facing in the z axis so if i go into the truck spawner and if we don't plug anything into the rotation the instantiated object will have the same rotation as this our original truck is so uh, so for our first lane which is over here uh, as you can see wait a minute let me just make it to the screen my mouse wheel is broken okay so this is my first lane over here and my first lane x value will be minus 7.5 and its rotation should be actually facing towards me so I'll just plug y 180 for the y and then for my lane 2 
uh, I again want my x value to be minus 2.5 wait a minute minus 2.5 and I want its rotation again to be 180 degree facing towards me and over here I'll just plug 2.5 for the x value so my car will be for the third lane my car will be over here and i'll plug 7.5 so my car will be over here in the fourth lane this is for the fourth lane and their rotation should be zero uh, you actually have to plug something over here so we'll just plug a protonian over here with zero 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 values so we'll just plug a crotonian over here with 000 values and now for the z value we will just take the z value of uh, this car's truck spawner so as you can see whenever my car moves my uh, all the child object moves with it so my truck spawner's z location will be always updated so we don't actually have to do math for that we can just add unit and type in position and as you can see here it's a get position use this node get position and then we'll just drag and drop it over here inside the vector 3 select for the get z and now we just have to plug this z value in the position socket of each and every node remember to plug it only in the, the position socket and not the rotation socket or else it will uh, give a weird results let's plug it over here so we just plugged every z value over there uh, and actually we just made our automated truck spawner let's hit play and check whether how it's working okay so as you can see as our truck has a rigid body and a collider it's interacting with our car uh, and randomly our trucks are being generated over lane 1 lane 2 and lane 3 Um, it's a totally random page so spawning on lane 1 lane 4 will be total random so yep as you can see it's just got spawned on lane 3 and 4 now as we are done with the random spawning ignore this okay ignore that uh, as we are done with the random spawning let's add a velocity for our trucks okay so just go on your truck uh, it already has a truck spawn flow macro so what we will do is we will just plug everything in here so ignore this script if you are following my tutorial series you know what this script is for it's for destroying our truck object whenever it goes behind our car so you can just go above or below it uh, I think I'll just go below it and now what we have to do is we need to give the truck a velocity and that's why we added a box collider and a rigid body component because we are going to give this a velocity so just right click and type in velocity and then we need to select rigid body set velocity drag it over here let's drag it and then we will create a new vector 3 so we want this velocity to be updated every frame but as it, as it is a rigid body component we want to use fixed update method okay so it's inside the fixed update event or method whatever you call and now we want its velocity only to be on the z direction so its z direction velocity will be 15 and then its x and y velocity we want it as it is so what we'll do is right click and then type in velocity 
get velocity and then we will get its vector 3 x and then vector 3 just drag and drop vector 3 and 5 uh, this is important because if we don't if we plug 0 and 0 over here unity will just interpolate between the current value or the imagine imagine that if we have collided with uh, this truck so that truck won't be having any actually that truck should have a velocity in something in x and y direction uh, and that won't be a case if that is a zero so that's why we are getting the world velocity over here hope that makes sense um yeah so let's just hit play and see how it looks okay so as you can see uh, logically these trucks are moving backwards because of this 15 it's it's acting and also it just got deleted i guess okay this 15 velocity is actually acting on the y axis over here so what we will do is we will change 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 its uh, direction uh, for applying the velocity depending upon the position of our truck so if our truck is positioned on the negative side of the value or the negative side of the x then we want its velocity to be minus 15 and if it's on this side of the positive side of the x which is lane 3 and 4 i want its value to be 15 so how we will do that just go into the control right click go into the control and select as we are selecting between two values now let's create uh, when it's two let's just create two integers control d to duplicate it and then we want its value to be either 15 or minus 15 so we have to take our truck as the script is on our truck we can get its position directly so right click and click position get position and then we will get its uh, x value drag and drop vector 3 x and now we have to compare this value but as we know uh, we only have to check if that is a negative value or positive value we don't care about the magnitude because anything which is over this side is negative and anything over that side is, I mean on the right side is positive so we will just normalize this to simplify everything and what normalize will do is uh, when the value is smaller than zero uh, doesn't matter what magnitude is that uh, let it be minus 3000 or 50,000 it will be minus 1 and if it's a greater than 0 value then it will be normalized to 1 so yeah normalized does nothing but it changes its magnitude and keeps the direction or the sign of that component okay so after normalizing it if my this value is equals to 1 okay so it's like positive 1 okay so if this value is equals to 1 and just plug that boolean over here um, let's move everything closer yep that looks, that looks good uh, if my value is 1 which is over here I want its velocity to be uh, minus 15 oh no wait uh, I actually want it 15 yep and if my uh, else uh, as you can see this condition will be false uh, so then we will get our truck to be minus 15 with the velocity of z okay uh, you'll just see if you are having a hard time understanding it as i am having a hard time explaining it for some reason uh, you'll just understand it when it works it's uh, actually really straightforward codes everyone should be able to read it okay so as you can see my trucks are spawned over there uh, my car just moved back okay my car just got attached to that pole uh, let's just move our car on the side over here and now let's hit play okay as you can see our trucks are having two different velocities uh, the ones which are over that side of the road 
has a velocity in different direction and the ones which are on our side of the road have a different ve velocity yep uh, that's it and in the next video i think we will add some something related to player uh, which is game over screen or say we want our game to end whenever or yeah a game to end whenever our car touches our truck or something like that we will just add something that challenging like player should not touch our truck and whenever it touches uh, we won't destroy the car but we will just go to the pause menu or main menu so that we will ask player so if he wants to restart the game or just want to go on the main menu so yep for the next tutorial uh, that's the thing we are going to do in the next tutorial yeah bye bye